Hi, folks. This is Tom Horn again coming to you from Studio A inside Skywatch Television and joined once again for the third week in a row by my very good friend, Dr. Michael Lake. Hey, great to be with you again, Dr. Lake. It's great to be back, Tom. Yeah, and if you uh, if you watch the first two weeks of programs, uh, you know that we really kind of got into this deeper than we thought we were going to. And the last time we were together, we were talking about what happened uh, in the uh, land of Shinar. Uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, we've been discussing Dr. Michael Lake's current research called the Shinar Directive, Preparing the Way for the Son of Perdition. And in the ancient plains of Shinar, something happened. In fact, I love the introduction to this book. In the ancient plains of Shinar, an evil was born. The first world king, the prototype transhuman, the ultimate despot, the son of perdition. I mean, wow, what a loaded phrase. I wish I could have stole that from you and put it on (laughs) one of my books. But you mentioned transhumanism, and in the last program we were talking about how the Hebrew language implies that something genetic, Uh, was going on. Uh, Genesis chapter 10 says he began to be. So something started happening to him, and it actually, it tells us what he began to be, a mighty or a giborim, the offspring of the Nephilim. What an incredible concept, right? Exactly. And I, I think it was, I think it was in all three aspects of his being, I think it affected him spiritually, his intellect, uh, became darker and deeper, as well as the, the physical attributes of the strength of the Nephilim. Well, and of course, he gave birth to this first great world global religion, this mystery Babylonian religion that, of course, is also predicted, I think, in the book of Revelation, mystery Babylon. So, and that goes along with your thesis that he's coming back, but we'll get more into that in a moment. I want to stick on this genetic issue for a moment that something happened, he began to become something different. That, of course, goes back to what the watchers were doing. When they came down on Mount Hermon, they come down into the valley of the plains. Um, They either simply had sex with human women, and this monstrosity was born out of it, or maybe it was a, a higher level of genetics, of sciences, or maybe it was both. Most likely both. Um, and uh, because, you know, some of the extra biblical texts, the book of Jasher you mentioned in one of the programs that we did before. And in the book of Jasher, it makes this astonishing statement. It says that after the angels gave forbidden knowledge to mankind, it says, and then man began to blend species of one animal with a different animal. Well, that's like right out of today's headlines, right? That's that's talking about a high level of biotechnology, the genetic tampering, transgenic creation of creatures. Now, why am I bringing that up? Because as you and I are sitting here today talking about the Shinar Directive, and part of your research says what happened before in the days of Noah, in the days of Nimrod, is prophesied to happen again. That would mean that since the days of the flood forward, we're, what, re-entering a period of time in which once again we're going to start doing genetic research, uh, the creation of transgenic beings. That's what I think. And then look at some of, and and this is just um, this week's headlines. And these are secular reports. Here's one, genetically modified cattle with human DNA might hold Ebola cure. Uh, Really? And this is happening right here uh, in, in South Dakota, the United States. We're creating cows that have fully human immune systems so that we can use them as a laboratory to create a, the possibility of an Ebola cure. And that, that's a, that is a reproduction of what they've already been doing in the, in the United Kingdom. That's right. Here's another headline from this week. Designer babies debate should start, scientists say. And actually, in this article, they say it needs to start right now because the technology is here to start literally engineering new forms of humans. What are we doing, Dr. Lake? Trying to create the human 2.0, the human noeticus. 
I, I, one of the things you see with Nimrod and what they were doing is they, they were trying to create a force that he could use that, that weren't bothered with ethics, that weren't bothered with uh, God being able to pierce their hearts and bringing them to repentance, that they would be totally dedicated and controlled by what Nimrod wanted to do. And they're wanting to replicate that in the earth today. You know, uh, one of the other books that you contributed to Blood on the Altar, uh, it's not what we're talking about today, but you wrote a chapter for it uh, in which you talked about the mark of the beast and this idea that through genetic tweaking, tampering, um, you could create something that almost might be kind of like soulless, uh, lacking empathy for other humans, that this might become part of both the the beast army in the end times that would make war uh, against the saints and slaughter humanity, essentially, without any sense of consciousness. When you look at the beginning of the book and the end of the book, as far as the Bible, we start with man being created in the image of God. Therefore, he can hear God, he can fellowship with God, and that image within us will speak. That's how we're brought to repentance. We have a conscience. And so we end up in the end of the book, that if, it, if they can redo on, with the man when he takes the mark, the image of the beast is, replaces the image of God, and it begins to speak to them. They're now tuned into Lucifer's frequency, if you will, and they become an army that is unredeemable, that can be completely controlled, almost a hive mind to replicate them of being of one mind and one language around the Tower of Babel. Yeah, as a matter of fact, in your book, you tie that frequency resonation in with the number 666. What's going on with that? Years ago, when I first listened to Brian Greene talking about the elegant universe, he spoke that under, when you get into quantum physics, the quark is the smallest element that we can detect or the smallest particle of the universe that we can detect. And that one of Einstein's conundrums was that uh, the laws of relativity did not work at the quantum level. And they discovered that within this quark there is a filament that is resonating. And so all of creation is still resonating with the voice of God. And so I wanted to verify this, and so I said, well, what is the harmonic resonance of the earth? 7.83, all are biblical numbers. Seven is God's plan of redemption for man. There's seven feasts, and we, we see seven in the book of Revelation of being complete. We see seven plagues and seven trumpets and seven mm -hmm. seals. Eight is the number of new beginning, the promise of the new birth. Three is God's perfect witness. And so 7.83, the, the, the harmonic resonance of our planet has embedded in it God's promise of redemption. Hmm. But what I also discovered is that our mind, if I could project uh, my voice over a radio frequency at 7.83 hertz, you would hear it in your mind, hmm. that your mind can directly receive that. Well, Satan is not able to fully mimic the voice of God, so maybe, just perhaps, his resonance is 6.66, which I discovered can also be picked up by the brain directly. In fact, there's been some evidence of mind control. If they could project within those hertz, they have discovered what they call the voice of God, that and they, can, they can project it over radio, over television, uh, over computers, that when that is projected, it will resonate with, within, within your mind, and it becomes irresistible. It becomes as if the voice of God within your head. You know, that kind of reminds me, um, Dr. Lake, of the late David Flynn, uh, you know, this wonderful Christian genius of a man that often saw things that other people did not see. He believed that when the watchers were altering humans, they were doing that because it would make them a fit extension, something that they could use to, what, download themselves into. Somehow, that's how they left their estate in heaven was by creating a form, a biological unit that was outside of the divine order. In other words, God had not made it, and it was not something that God had said, each kind shall reproduce after its own kind. It was neither a man nor was it a beast. It was genetically a blend of all of the above, and it created this unique host that would allow for these angels to leave their habitation, that's what the New Testament says, and to extend themselves down into the earth. So looking at these headlines a moment ago, we've got to start the debate now about genetically engineering new forms of humans. Here's another one, by the way, a headline from today, creating super women and men who will benefit from the coming age 
of human enhancement. But really, that probably is the right question, isn't it? Who will benefit from the coming age of human enhancement? Are we at a time where we're in danger of doing what David Flynn thought the Watchers did, of creating a biological unit into which darkness, soulless, terrible, horrific things can become incarnate? I think you see in the book of Revelation, I I think that they're going to try to enhance us to become their servants, but they need an enforcer squad, if you will. In the book of Revelation, we find individuals that were never, their names were never written in the Lamb's book of life. DARPA already has projects on the book where they're looking at cloning super soldiers. So if you have this, you have a maturation process where you can clone this body that's not human, it's not animal, and a human spirit's not going to enter into it, that becomes a fit extension for for these fallen angels or the fallen Nephilim to be able to enter into and have an expression, uh, a physical expression to manifest themselves through within our reality. They, They will... Uh, with without thought, follow the Antichrist no matter what he says because there's no humanity there. That's why the book of Revelation says that there's no hope for them. They were never written in the Lamb's Book of Life because they were never human to begin with. Yeah, well, you know, you mentioned DARPA. I wonder how many people that's watching this program know that like the last three uh, uh, annual budgets for DARPA, the presidentially approved budgets, have literally tens of millions of dollars in them set aside for creating a new genetic blueprint for the super soldier technology you're talking about. You know, we started out uh, three weeks ago, the first program we did on this, talking about how the conspiratorial worldview is the only uh, adequate biblical worldview. And how many people would say, really, super soldier technology, it's all just a bunch of malarkey? But if it was, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency... Uh, you know, all of the other military agencies, the Department of Defense, the Jasons, which is one of the most highly and secretive uh, advisory panels to the U.S. military and to the U.S. Congress, have published paper after paper over the last few years talking about how we have got to set money aside and we have got to get ahead in the human enhancement race. They, they actually are talking about this as if it's the next arms race. It is, and I think Russia has their own counterpart. I think China has its own counterpart. The U.K. has its own counterpart. But I I think what we don't realize is that the elite are behind the scenes, and they're funding all the nations that are doing this, so that behind the scenes they're sharing their technology among their own, so where maybe Russia develops a part, DARPA develops a part, China develops a part, but only the elite have all the pieces of the puzzle, so that when they're putting their army together, the other nations aren't even going to have it. Just they are. Well, again, you know, you mentioned the elite, and some people might be quick to say, well, that's just a, that's a conspiratorial um, point of view. And yet there have been secular studies that have been published by, at the university level in just the last few years showing that all of the world's wealth is really managed by a handful of elitist families that consider themselves royalty. And uh, they're the ones that benefit from wars that are fought. And, you know, this country gets disenfranchised with another. Right now, gasoline is so cheap, you know, in the United States because what? You got Saudi Arabia trying to punish Iraq or Syria and some of the other countries. These are all puppets. They're all puppets in the hands of the marionettes that are setting up here, according now to secular research that shows that there's a few hundred or at most a few thousand families on the planet that control all the wealth of the world. And what are they known by? They're known as blue bloods. Right. Kind of wonder if that, not, that may not be a, a colloquialism for Nephilim blood. Well, again, you know, another one of the the reports that the Jasons published recently for the Department of Defense, people can Google this and read the summary of the report, which I think is about 100 pages online, and it's called the $100 Genome Implications for the DOD or the Department of Defense. Again, that's just the summary report. You can't get the full report, which was for their eyes only. But what do they talk about? They talk about genotype and phenotype. And their whole point is that as you start changing the genotype of humans, their phenotypic expressions, what you see, how they walk, how they talk, how they look, behavioral instincts. If you change their genotype to part animal 
Are they going to start acting? Are we going to have men that have the instincts of a wolf? This is like something out of a nightmare. Yeah. And yet you have the highest level advisory people in the world that are providing this information to the Department of Defense, but they're also saying that it's not really a moral choice. In other words, they're saying, they're kind of cued into what you had just said, there are other nations of the world, and they're developing this technology clandestinely right now, and we cannot afford for them to get ahead of us in this technology because they're going to use it to dominate us on the battlefield or in the marketplace as the benefits of human enhancement take off and we enter into the hybrid age and now everybody wants a brain implant or brain enhancement so they can be kind of synthetically, telepathically connected to the internet of things and whatever, right? This is some scary stuff and yet it's here and it doesn't appear to be any way to stop it. And at the same time, they're, they're saying if we're going to have this, we also have to install hive mentality within these people so that we can control them. And so I, they're, they're not going to make the super soldier without being able to flip a switch and control them. And, and the, the hive mentality is scary because it is the closest I've seen to replicate what they were doing at the Tower of Babel. Well, folks, listen, we are you know, three weeks <laughs> of, of studies into this, and we are still just scratching the surface. Uh, if you want to get a copy of the Shinar Directive, which goes into all of the real uh, meat of what we've barely been able to discuss on these programs. Uh, we're making that available for 19.95, but it comes with a fabulous free library. Uh, there is uh, a data DVD. You want to remind uh, us what's on this data DVD? There's over 100 Christian books to help build your library. Uh, there's also books done on Freemasonry so that you can really understand their mindsets in your own research, not to become one, but to stand against mm -hmm. them. Uh, as well as Bible software to begin being able to really exegete from Scripture and, and really to dig deep into Scripture. I think that every household uh, needs to become a house of learning to where we, we can understand the Word of God ourselves. And so we've tried to put all that on the DVD for folks. And there's also 39 hours of seminars that will help. Uh, that's on the Data DVD, but we're also providing free the brand new book by Mark Flynn. I mentioned David Flynn a moment ago. Mark Flynn's his identical twin brother, an equal genius. His new book, Forbidden Secrets of the Labyrinth, goes into some of the other uh, things that are covered by your book. Zenith 2016, which has been probably my all-time best-selling book, which also scratches the surface of what you're talking about in the Shinar Directive. And then a book that's so new it isn't even officially released yet, Antichrist Chronicles, unveiling the rise of Earth's final furor by our good friend uh, Terry James. All four of those books and the Data DVD uh, library, what people are calling the definitive uh, library on a study on the, the oldest and actually most frightening conspiracy in the history of mankind. Now, a moment ago, we were talking about uh, genetics. And uh, in, in this work, you also talk about Plato's Republic. Uh, explain that. Plato, in, in his hypothesized utopian republic, he wanted three classes of people. You had the overlords that were the intellectuals, the, uh, the technocrats that would govern society. Of course, they would do it for the best of everyone. And I believe those are the ones that are going to achieve immortality or similar or close to immortality uh, through what they're doing. They end up having to be thrown alive into a lake of fire. You have all of us worker bees, if you will, that we get, we're more durable, we last longer. There's no, you don't have to repair us in hospitals so much. And then you have the third class, which are the, uh, which is the army to keep us under subjection to the overlords. That's what he saw as a republic, and that's really what I see in the book of Revelation. And the only way to, to get out of this entire thing is to go back to the Word of God. That, that's where I try to end the book. Uh, they're of one mind because they have a hive mind. We can be of one accord because we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, that right. we're being led by the Holy Spirit, that we start getting back in the word, that we start living according to what the word of God tells us to do. Uh, that's why I think that you know, the last, some of the last writings that we have in the Bible are by the, the Apostle John. He wrote the Gospel of John so that all might believe. He then writes the book of Revelation so that we can know what's happening. But I, I think he couldn't leave it there. You know, it's his pastor's heart. Okay, I just told them hell on earth is going to come. Now, what am I going to give them mm -hmm. to make it through that? So he gives us 1 John. 
And in 1 John, he makes it very clear who Jesus is. He makes it very clear what the Antichrist is going to be, what his spirit does in the earth. He makes it very clear that, that if we do mess up, we can repent. We can bring it under the blood of Jesus. And then he begins to tell us just how important the ways and the commandments of God are and how they equip us. And he makes this daring I mean, it's daring if you understand what we're going to face in the book of Revelation. He says, if a, if a man keeps himself according to the word, the wicked one touches him not. And that's that glorious bride without spot and a wrinkle. I think that when the harpazo comes, when, when, the, when the Lord re- comes and he pulls us out of this, it's not to get us out of here So before we get our head bash in, that we so stand against what the Antichrist is doing, and we have matured and become so strong that he's going to have to pull us out of here so that he can finish the work. And I think that's where we're headed. No matter what the devil is doing, God has a plan for his people mm-hmm. that can counter it in the earth. And the only reason we're going to get out of here, whether it's pre, mid, or post-trib, is so that he can finish what he's going to do and finish his judgments on the Antichrist. And that's what I'm excited about, is the remnant rising up in the power of God and moving of one mind and one accord the way it should be and showing up the devil. Wow. Well, obviously, you're also very passionate about that. And that comes through in your book as well. One of the things I really, really appreciated about this work is a lot of people write a book, and they write a book so they can sell a book or whatever their motivation might be. You actually poured your heart and soul into this work, but the pastoral and and Christian educator side of you also came through in here in that you really wanted to also show the saints how they could be equipped, how they can be powerful against this ultimate scheme, this Shinar directive, because the devil does have a directive, but thank God, God has a directive too. And we know, of course, who's going to uh, win in the end of all of this. Christian education, you know, most of the universities in the United States all started with a Christian ethos. Uh, That's all been lost. It's all been abandoned. They've really become institutes that are Um, anti-Christian. What do you think can be done about this? Now, first of all, how has education been used to kind of dumb down and prepare this generation for the coming of Nimrod, the coming of Antichrist? You see in the 20th century, the uh, skull and bones, there was a guy named G. Stanley Hall that had graduated Union Theological Seminary, and all of a sudden he had these mysterious benefactors say, we want you to go to, uh, to Germany and study under uh, Wilhelm Wundt. He was, a, he was a professor at the University of Leipzig, and he specialized in psychological conditioning. In fact, he's the one who trained Ivan Pavlov. Uh, where we get, you know, he was able to precondition a dog to salivate every time a bell rung. Well, he took the, he, they not only paid for him to go and study underneath this guy, they supported him for 12 years. And then when he came back, flat broke, all of a sudden, one day the president of Harvard University comes up and says, I got a position for you. They did this with uh, six other individuals. They then seated them into seven universities By 1948, they had 1,331 PhD experts in the psychological conditioning within pedagogy or education that transformed American education from being that of learning how to comprehend critical thinking, being able to learn. They conditioned us to to, uh, react to responses. All of of American education is now about that. So that uh, to create a riot, you just simply put the right trigger on television. If they want you to buy the, the new thing that's going to help fund their works, they just make you go buy the best TV or the, or the best whatever gadget or television or house or whatever and go into debt. All they got to do is find the right trigger because all of your education from kindergarten on is to teach you to be a part of the B system. And uh, as a Christian educator, we've got to step out of this. Um, my mentor years ago told me, never be a part of regional accreditation. Don't be a part of the U.S. Department of Education because they want to do away with Christian education. So biblical life has never been part of that. We don't follow the Greco-Roman uh, uh, structure of liberal arts. If you're going to study for ministry, you have 120 semester credit hours of just ministerial training because that's what you're going to use. You're not going to use advanced algebra in ministry. Uh, you know, you know, you've been in ministry while you're preaching, you'll hire an accountant to take care of all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You're not going to do it. So why are we watering down? 
It's to, it's to embed all these other things into the educational process to, to water down not only the average Christian, but even the minister. Well, once again, Dr. Lake, it's hard to believe that we've been <laughs> sitting here for almost a half hour, uh, a third show, a third week. I guess all good things have got to come to an end. At some point, we've got to stop. We're definitely going to have you back on Skywatch Television again. Folks, if you want to learn more about the Shinar Directive, as well as how you can get these free books and the free data uh, DVD. There should be a phone number on the screen that you can call. You can also visit skywatchtv.com to learn more there. I would also want uh, to encourage you to find out more about the educational programs that you make av available through Biblical Life. What is the website for that? It's www.biblical-life.com. And is there information in the book about it? No, there's not. There's not. See, he, he just kept it on point, and he didn't try to pitch himself. Well, what you've got about one minute. What would you like to close with? I think it's time for the body of Christ to get serious about their own spirituality. Your pastor's not supposed to do it for you. Your denominational head's not supposed to do it for you. God is calling you to be accountable. It's time for us to repent. It's time for us to pick up the word of God like never before, and, and to say, God, transform me. If, if, the, if the enemy is wanting to transform and create an army, use me to create your army in this end time. Do you think there can be one final great awakening? I think there will be. It may be different than anything we could ever imagine. But we're, we're literally going to give the devil hell before I, we get out of here. I'm praying that that will happen. Well, Folks, thank you for joining us today on Skywatch Television to listen to these three weeks of conversations with Dr. Michael Lake. Make sure that you avail yourself of his university studies, which are or his college studies, which are available online. Also get a copy of his book and join us again next week on Skywatch Television.